Always that moment too, right? We've all had that moment where you clean yourself up and think that boozing is going to be a, a piece of history for you, right? Have that one crazy night and wake up and you're just like, oh, no more drinking for me. And you take a shower and brush your teeth and you're like, and I'm back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had that moment uh, a couple years ago. I went on tour with my, uh, one of my best friends, Adam Devine, creator star, workaholics, pitch perfect, uh, modern family. Uh, man, crazy traveling with a famous dude of that magnitude. Didn't know some of the perks you get to experience. Uh, right on the tour, second night, he goes, you guys want to go to a Kings of Leon concert? I got some friends in the band. We can hang out backstage, kick it with them. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. That's what you bring to the table for being this famous. I'm not on that level. I would love to go to a free Kings of Leon concert. Are you kidding me? Uh, and afterwards, if you guys want some free broccoli cheddar soup, um, <laughs> I got a buddy who manages a Panera, not too far from me. So that's what I can bring to the table. It's not a free concert, but it's free soup. Don't be an asshole about it. It's not even free. If my buddy's buddy is working, maybe we can get half off. <laughs> I got hammered that night. Drink a bottle of Patron by myself. Have not done it since. Hadn't done it prior. But shit, man, sometimes you're feeling good. You're feeling rested. You look in the, the mirror, 7 p.m., and you're just like, Hakuna Matata. <laughs> I ain't worried about shit tonight. I'm feeling like my best self, TGIF on a Wednesday. Let's do this, right? I got fucked up. Uh, drink a bottle of Patron in the Kings of Leon green room, and I'm drunk by 9.30 p.m. 9.30! And hadn't eaten all day. I'm hammered and hungry. Get a very apocalyptic mindset about food. That's what happens when you're starving and fucked up. I'm looking at all these treats, and I'm just like, dude, I gotta start rummaging some snacks into my pants, right? I grabbed a bowl of Jolly Ranchers, start pouring them in my fucking pants, because in my drunk apocalyptic brain, I was like, if the world ends tonight, I'm gonna need treats for the journey, right? <laughs> that made sense. Nathan, the drummer, comes in, tries to make light of the situation. It was like, hey, man, uh, leave some for the rest of us. And instead of acknowledging his attempt to build some rapport, I just look at him and go, <laughs> and kept shoveling Jolly Ranchers. Get your own strawberry rectangles, man. I was here first. Had to get out of there, go back to the Courtyard Marriott in Nashville, Tennessee, where I'm presented with the grocery store leftovers. The hotel snack lounge, weird looking burritos, lean cuisines, and on this particular night, three lonely cans of Chef Boyardee's beefaroni. Yeah, and judging by your guys' reaction, you're like, oh cool, Adam, I didn't even know they were still making that shit. <laughs> uh, guess what, they are, and it's about time you start respecting one of the most prolific Italian chefs of our generation. I take three cans up to my room and I put three cans in one bowl. One bowl that's not equipped to hold a half a can of beefaroni. But I'm not thinking about the consequences or how it's all gonna work out. I'm just dancing, singing in front of the microwave, pumped about the delicious Italian cuisine I'm about to slam. I'm just like, I'm about to eat some beefaroni. Oh, fuck! I put it in the microwave for nine and a half minutes. <laughs> Yo, that's way too long to cook anything. I was just like, boop, boop, that's the right time for yummy and my dummy. I take the roni out of the quave, it's oozing everywhere. I trip over my suitcase because I didn't turn the fucking lights on because I thought I could see in the dark. I was like, the noodles will lead me to the promised land. Trip over my suitcase because I got boozy confidence and I felt invincible. Boozy confidence, we've all been there. It's why people try karaoke when they're timid. It's why married couples, uh, you know, on a Wednesday, we'll have a couple gin and tonics, you know, and just be like, you know, maybe tonight we do anal, you know. Boozy confidence. <laughs> Boozy confidence is why my best friend on New Year's last year got so drunk at the end of the night, uh, lost his keys to his apartment, and then tried to open the front door by pressing his iPhone on the door. <laughs> Do you understand? He drank so much tequila, he thought he came home to the future. That is a lot of alcohol to think you could pull that off. And normally I'd laugh at that type of behavior, but he's Asian. And I was like, that's not impossible for you to fathom you could do that right now, Dave. <laughs> You crafty bastard. Asians are known for being well ahead of the times, technologically speaking. So when you see an Asian dude try to open a door by pressing a phone on it, we're all standing behind him like, whoa, is that something we can fucking do now? Is that... Should I get the update? So now I got beefaroni all over the bed, and you're thinking, cool, you clean it up, went to bed, proceed with your life the next day like a decent person. Nope, I left that shit. I was like, I bet it'll disappear by itself. Good night, world. Get a call from the front desk, 8.30. This is all 1,000% true, right? 8.30, Mr. Ray, how you feeling? Everything okay? I'm like, yeah, what's going on? I was eating Kings of Leon with the Jolly Ranchers last night. How you doing? He's like, I'm glad you're feeling okay because the maids came in at 8 a.m. and found blood all over your bed. I was like, what? Blood? Who came in and bled on my bed in the middle of the night? You said this was a blood-free hotel. He's like, we never said that. Well, you should have. I finally realized what it was. I put two and two together and I say to the dude verbatim, oh, no, 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 beefaroni sheets. <laughs> and then it's just silent on the other end of the phone. And then it hit me. Oh yeah, you can't just say, no, 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 beefaroni sheets. 
and expect anybody to understand what the fuck you're talking about. Like he was just gonna go, oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's every uh, Friday for us, beefaroni sheets, yeah. Did you have a good time with the Kings of Leon, I presume? I go, dude, I think the bigger question is here, what's going on in the heads of your maids where they can't differentiate between chunky pasta sauce and a possible crime scene? Who's training these gals? They come in, take one look at the bed and go, it's a blood, and walk out and don't even try to taste a meat square and solve the crime themselves? Show some initiative, Sylvia. You've been there 25 years. Here's where I know I hit rock bottom. He goes, Mr. Ray, I appreciate the feedback. I'll take that into consideration. But before you come down, I'm gonna need you to pay for all that beefaroni. <laughs> I was like, pay for it, what? He goes, we have you on security cam. <laughs> Stumbling into the courtyard at 2.40 in the morning, grabbing three cans of beefaroni off the shelf, fist pumping to yourself, and tripping into the elevator. <laughs> we zoomed in on your mouth and it looked like you were saying Hakuna Matata for some reason. 